A couple months ago, we got a call from a client that we work with occasionally, and they asked for some help on a renewable energy project down in, in the southern end of the California Central Valley. Uh, the, the client uh, was working for an energy company um, that needed a short transmission line from a, a solar farm site over to a substation. And so what we were told in that initial conversation was that, uh, that the client just needed some land descriptions for some easements for the transmission line over a few parcels, quote unquote. Um, so uh, we, we said, yeah, we're happy to help if your client uh, you know, if the energy developer needs help, we're happy to take a look at it. So uh, we did some initial record research and um, realized after we had taken a look that uh, that this wasn't going to be quite as simple as as people had told us it was going to be. So what we found is that is that the proposed transmission route actually crossed <clears throat> nine individual parcels, um, not not three or four, so almost double the number of parcels that included uh, a highway, state highway right away, the transmission line. Uh, the proposed route crossed the state highway, and uh, we realized that that what the the client really needed was a a good uh, boundary survey, right? A good right of way survey, um, and and that that sur that you know the client initially told us that that the, some survey work had already been done, and that all they needed was the land descriptions. But when we got into got into it, we realized that wasn't true. This proposed transmission route, even though it was short, it wasn't long. It was probably half a mile. Um, it was well outside the bounds of the survey that had been done on the solar farm. And uh, they were going to need way more than just three or four uh, land descriptions for some some utility easements. Okay, so, um, you know, we originally talked about, you know, we could do we could do a few uh, land description and plats for utility easements, you know, for several thousand dollars, maybe, you know, somewhere between six and six and ten thousand dollars, depending on on what they needed. Well, it turned out they needed a lot more than that. So they needed a boundary survey of at least nine parcels, right? Uh, not including the state highway right away. Uh, they needed some kind of topo along that route so they could design their, their towers. Um, they needed a right away survey of, of the highway, right? And, and they weren't gonna let, Caltrans wasn't gonna let them put an overhead line over, over the highway. They were gonna have to do a jack and bore under the highway, which means you gotta know exactly where the highway right away is so you can, you can place your, your bore pits. Um, they were going to need at least nine land descriptions and plats, and I suspect the number was going to be more than nine by the time they figured out access easements and some other things like that. Uh, they were going to need uh, an encroachment permit, uh, Caltrans encroachment permit, to get their um, their jack and bore under the highway. They, that was probably going to have to be monitored by a licensed surveyor during construction. Uh, they were going to need right-of-way staking of the proposed route so they could build their uh, their towers and their infrastructure. And by the, by the time we were all done, we were gonna we were gonna need to do a record of survey map because we were gonna survey some some previously unsurveyed parcels. So uh, that was not six thousand or eight thousand dollars. That was a lot of work. Um, you know, that was tens of thousands of dollars worth of work. So um, that you know, we we relayed that information to the client. Uh, the client went back to the energy developer. You know, the the energy developer was a little taken aback by that and said, "All right, you know, we obviously need to go back to the drawing board." figure out if this if this is going to pencil out the way we thought. So what are some lessons here? Um, if you're building an energy transmission line, um, that's not like putting up a tool shed in your backyard or building a 7-Eleven on the corner lot. Like that, that's a big deal. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of issues that could potentially come into play on a project like that. I mean, we, we haven't even talked about the land use issues or sequel issues that might come up. I mean, just from a right-of-way perspective, there, you know, there was a lot of uh, potential things they hadn't thought about. Um, you know, you if, if you come to California, this was an out-of-state energy developer, um, and I've seen this happen over and over again. You know, you're you're an out-of-state company, and you come ca to California to build major infrastructure. Uh, you better put your big boy pants on. Uh, we we don't just cowboy stuff here in this state. <laughs> We're heavily regulated in every way, um, and you really got to know what you're doing. Um, you, you you know you can't just get your excavator out and your bulldozer and start moving dirt. Uh, not in this state. Uh, there's a there's a lot of red tape and there's a lot of regulation. So uh, you got to be sophisticated and intelligent, and you got to be uh, prepared to get your checkbook out too, right? Um, so you're you're going to need more than a couple survey sketches uh, to get your infrastructure uh, put in the ground here in California. You know you're you're going to need some professional survey uh, products. You know in this case they needed a good boundary survey, they needed a good topographic survey, they probably needed some documents for appraisers. They needed plats and legals. They needed a monitoring survey for the jack and bore. 
Um, there was going to need to be a record of survey. I mean, there was a lot of stuff here that they just had never thought about or, and probably never seen. Uh, the other thing I think it teaches you is if, if you're going to do a project like that, you need to hire a good commercial real estate consultant or right-of-way consultant or real estate manager. Um, you know, a lot of these companies focus just on the physical infrastructure and the construction, and they don't realize that the, that the property rights right-of-way component is just as complicated um, as, the, as the construction component. Um, but they're not used to dealing with that. But you, you need somebody helping your organization with the real estate and, and the right-of-way uh, side and the permitting side, just like you have somebody managing the, the construction side. So don't skip that. Um, I'll have Lori, our, our content marketing specialist, put a link in the description of this video to another video where I talk about why organizations need a real estate manager, just like they have a building manager, a facilities manager. It's, it's a related topic, so I'll make sure we get that link in. Uh, so yeah, you want to come to California and, and build a short energy transmission line? Uh, my company, my team can help you do that, uh, but you better wear your big boy pants and you better bring your checkbook, right? This, this isn't uh, the middle of nowhere Oakieville uh, where you can just get your bulldozer out and, and start, uh, start building stuff, right? There's a process that has to be followed here. And if you're not careful, you're going to get burned. So don't, don't do that. And ideally, you'll have a conversation with with a team like mine well before um, you've started making uh, investment decisions.